The Ishikawa diagram is sometimes called the fishbone diagram because it looks like a fish. The head of the fish is the problem statement. There are main bones, which are the main steps in your process. And then you have the smaller bones, which is the results of your root cause analysis. The first step in completing a fishbone diagram is to define your problem statement. The problem statement should reflect the first bar on your Pareto chart. So in this example, we'll go look at the Pareto chart that we started with. And we have a Pareto chart of error codes. We'll see that the big bar on our Pareto chart is error code E, which accounted for 45% of our errors. So we'll go back to the Ishikawa diagram. And in the problem statement, we'll show that. So we'll say during, and this will be time, so it can be a month or a year. And then the big bar of our Pareto chart, which is error code E, accounted for, and it accounted for 45% of the errors, which was three times higher than what we desired. And then that caused customer dissatisfaction. So once you've completed your problem statement, the next step is to label the main bones of your fish. The template defaults to materials, process, people, and machines. You can update those to reflect your own particular problem statement, or you can use different steps within a process. And that's what we'll do in this example. So we're going to say we have a sub-process for orders, and we might have um, another section for billing. Next, we're going to document the results of our root cause session. This is our session where we go at, where we keep asking the question, why, why, why? So in this example, we might say that our orders were wrong, and one of the first answers to the question why is that the order form itself is wrong. Next, we ask, well, why is the order form wrong? And we might get the answer, well, it's missing fields. Keep going down to the why, why, why until you get to the end, of, end result of that question. If you need to add more bones to your chart, just use Excel's drawing tools. So in this example, we can click on that arrow, hold the Shift key down, click on the one below it, choose Edit, Copy, then Edit, Paste, and we, we've got a new set of bones which we can drag around to where we want to put it on our fishbone diagram. To add text to those, just go down to the text box, click above, and let's say we might have another item where um, somebody didn't understand the policy. And again, you can click and drag that to place it and move it. Once you've completed all of your bones, what you'll want to next do is to circle the primary root causes to show where you're going to start doing your countermeasures. To circle your root causes, just go down to, again to Excel's drawing tools. We'll select the circle, click and drag, and then what we'll want to do is format that. So I've right clicked on it. I'm going to format auto shape, and I'm going to select no fill, so that when we drag it over our words, it won't cover them up. So we might say that the missing fields is our primary item we're going to work on, so we'll circle that. After you've circled the root causes that you're going to work on, you're done with your Ishikawa diagram, what you can do now is add it to the rest of your quality improvement story. To do that, we're going to go to Edit, Move or Copy Sheet, click Create a Copy, and then we're going to add it to the workbook where we had our Pareto chart. Click OK. And now we've transferred our Ishikawa diagram into the same workbook that we have our Pareto, chi Pareto chart. So we so your user can click on tabs to see your whole QI story. And when you're done with your countermeasures matrix, you can add it to the, to the workbook as well. And that's all there is to creating an Ishikawa diagram in the QI macros.